Hi folks, Professor Amachi. Wanted to introduce you to the I Can Has Dad Joke API. And we're gonna be using JS to make these API calls. So if you're ready, let's get started. We're gonna do an Ajax demo with the I Can Has Dad Joke API. And this is adapted from westboss.com. So um, if you wanna dive into JS a little bit more, then I highly recommend uh, westboss.com. Uh, they just do some amazing work and I think you'll be very happy with it as well. Here's what we're gonna do here. Uh, we're gonna be doing an Ajax example in this exercise using a dad joke API. Every time you click the button here, a new random dad joke should be fetched from the API and displayed with the button text that will change occasionally. That is like, oh my God, dad, that was the worst. Uh, can you please stop? No, I mean like really stop now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be using an endpoint here for get a random dad joke from the API. I can has dad joke API. And that looks like this here. Okay, here it is. So there's no real authentication in here. So uh, we don't have to pass a token or anything like that. Uh, the kind of headers that we can accept here are gonna be HTML. I think that's by default. Uh, we're also gonna be able to accept JSON and plain text here. Okay, so let's go to our files here. The uh, index is right here. Go ahead and put your name and date in there, not mine. The HTML has pretty much been done for you as well as the CSS. Uh, what we're gonna do with the CSS is work with it a little bit at the end here. For jokes.js, go ahead and put your name and date, and we're going to Check this out. This assignment will require custom editors, which is really a good thing to learn. And so we're going to be learning how to ensure that the button text, this button text here, it never uses the same text twice because sometimes random is not random enough. Index HTML. So as you can see here, we are calling base.css for our CSS over here. And then here, we're gonna be referencing the jokes.js script here. All right, now let's create a function here that's gonna be responsible for fetching the joke. So let's go ahead and drop this in. This is gonna be our button text here joke button and the joke holder they're going to be doing document query selectors and we're going to be passing over the get joke and the joke here too so we're going to be building these out okay let's take a look at chrome dev tools here okay and this is what it looks like here so if you refresh the page here if you look at the console here uh, we will see that we did get a response back here from the iconhasdadjoke.com. Uh, we do have our headers here. Our status is 200. Status 200 is okay. Now, this is fine, but why don't we turn this into something that's a little bit more human readable for us, shall we? Why don't we come out here Why don't we construct joke response JSON? This is kind of like how we do all the time. However, if you try that, you're probably gonna see a uh, uncaught in promise syntax error that's gonna be right here. What that means is that we most likely have been returned some HTML uh, since it's returning an open angle bracket. And while it's trying to parse that, JSON is complaining, right? You see this right here. So let's take a look at network over here. 
So if we were to take a look at network and then see I can have dad joke, uh, yeah, our response here was in HTML. So we got to fix that. Uh, we want JSON to come back. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to have to pass a header over because over here in our headers, yeah, this was just a standard get. and scheme HTTPS. So why don't we do this? So why don't we construct our response here? It's going to be await, uh, fetch, and then why don't we throw the headers into here? Okay, so let's expand this out. And we do headers there. So for our headers, let's expand that out. We're going to do an accept application JSON. So how about now we need to await the response? So await response here. And uh, I think this is going to be OK for us. See, so now that we awaited that, uh, we should have the ID here. Joke is over here. Status is 200. And we should be able to refresh this a few times and get different jokes. So there's another example that's going to be right over here. Uh, we just want to get just the joke here, right? So why don't we try to do this? Um, accept uh, text plane. And the reason why this works here is that uh, anything that comes after this is overwritten. So we had application JSON here, and we did an accept for text plane right after. So text plane overwrote JSON. And of course, we get an unexpected token, same kind of thing, but this was just a demo to show you what it looks like. Okay, so we change the format back to JSON over here and then return it from the fetch jokes function. Okay, easy enough. We can do uh, data here, response JSON, and then return it. So cool. Next time we want to wire the button up here so that when somebody clicks it, we're going to fetch a joke here. So let's get rid of our fetch joke call that's down here. And let's make an async function called handle click, which will be responsible for fetching the joke. So there's our handle click. And the reason why we are destructing that fetch joke call there is fetch joke will return an object to us with ID, joke, and status. We only want the joke property for now. So we are destructing the joke property to its own variable. So let's add an event listener for the click event and pass it to the handle click function to run on the event. Okay, so that's joke button, add event listener, click, and then we're going to handle that click there. So now when we refresh this page and we click get joke, we now see different jokes in the console. And that's straight from the joke ID. So now within this handle click here, we're going to take that joke holder and set its text content to be the joke. Okay, so that means uh, we do joke holder. 
uh, text content is going to equal joke. And we should be able to get rid of that console log there too. So let's click the button now. And awesome. Check it out. So we now, instead of having this joke in the console, we now have it right up here on the web page. So suppose we want to take this button here and replace it with one of the strings in this button text array. So like one of these here. So what we can do is call a function called get item from array, which will accept two arguments, the array, then what not to be. And we'll implement that in a second here. Come out over here. We're going to create a function here for a random item from array. The reason we are using the pass in array to calculate the length and not the button text variable is that we want this function to be a utility function and to be able to use them for anything, not just with the button text array. This allows it to be more generic. So let's try this. Let's go down to the console here and then we can try this. See, random item from array, and then we pass something from button text. So one of these here. So let's uh, try that. <laughs> now, sometimes it will randomly return the exact same thing, which makes it seem like nothing happened. That is why we have the not parameter that we are passing. Within the random item from array function, we'll use the not parameter to ensure the same text isn't selected twice. To do that, we're going to add a check for whether the randomly selected item matches the not argument. And if it does, we'll call the function again. So in that random item from array, we're going to do an if statement right here. Okay, and we're going to do a console log uh, to say, hey, we used that last time. And then this function is going to go and grab another response here, another button text response. Okay, so go ahead and save that. Uh, let's do random item from array. Let's also do this, like, uh, please stop. Okay, so I think we're going to have to do, if this matches, please stop. So we're probably going to have to do this a few times. Yeah, so check this out. So uh, if we get a please stop here, it says, hey, we used that the last time. Look again. So then uh, went back and caught, you're the worst. <laughs> so now we can do this with our handle click. So with our handle click here, so we can do a joke button. Joke button text content. Uh, it's going to be random item from array. And then random item from array. We are going to pass in here the button text and the joke button text content. So we're ensuring that the button text never stays the same using this line of code. We get the not argument from the text that currently exists when the button is clicked. So if we refresh a page, we should see that this is working. Uh, go ahead and click this multiple times here. 
hey, check that out. So that button text uh, passed it over to the button here. So if we get a duplicate here, we might have to do this a few times. Uh, we see out here in the console that we use that the last time. Look again. Ah, we used that the last time. Look again. All right, so this is working out just fine. Okay, cool. So as far as our assignments concerned, that will be just fine. Just the default CSS, the index HTML default one there, and the JS file. So that second part that is in the lab, we'll do that on another video. But as far as the week seven assignment, include that JS, include that index, include the CSS, and we'll be okay. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next.